Hello everyone, I am Sini Shibu from the Department of Computer Applications of the Bhopal School of Social Sciences and I am talking about programming with C++ and data structures. In today's lecture, I am going to talk about inheritance, polymorphism and dynamic binding. These are the three concepts of C++ programming that we are going to concentrate in this lecture. So after going through this lecture, you will be able to know about inheritance and what are its various types. You would understand about the concept of polymorphism and you would be able to differentiate between static and dynamic binding. So let us start with the concept of inheritance. The mechanism of deriving a new derived class, which is also known as a subclass, from an old base class is known as inheritance. It is based on the concept of code reusability. It basically saves a lot of programming time. We would have many types of inheritance. For example, a single inheritance will have a base class which is single. And in multiple inheritance, we would have several base classes. Apart from single inheritance and multiple inheritance, there are many other inheritances. So let us see what are the various types of inheritances that we can implement in C++ programming. Here you see the various types of inheritance. Firstly, this is a single inheritance concept. In a single inheritance, you would have a single base class and one class is going to be derived from the base class and this class will be known as the derived class or the subclass. The second type of inheritance is known as multiple inheritance. In multiple inheritance, there would be more than one base classes. As you see here, this class C is derived from A and B. So we have multiple classes and from that we are deriving a single class. This is known as a multiple inheritance. Then we come to hierarchical inheritance. In hierarchical inheritance, we would have a hierarchy of classes that are going to be derived. As you see in this example, we have class A as the base class and in the second level of hierarchy, we have class B, class C and class D. So this concept is called as hierarchical inheritance. The next type of inheritance is known as multi-level inheritance. In multi-level inheritance, there are going to be multiple levels in which the classes are going to be derived. Here you see that class B is derived from class A and class C is further derived from class B. So this is what is known as a multi-level inheritance. Finally, we have a hybrid type of an inheritance. A hybrid type of an inheritance basically combines one or more other types of inheritance. So here you see this is a hierarchical and then this is a multiple inheritance that is coming into existence and a combination of both of them is known as a hybrid inheritance. So these are the various types of inheritance that we could be doing in C++ and using our code for generating inheritable codes. The next concept that we are discussing is known as polymorphism. The ability to take more than one form is known as polymorphism. C++ supports polymorphism through three major concepts. The first one is known as operator overloading. The second one is known as function overloading. And finally, the third one is the virtual functions. Operator overloading and function overloading are compiled time polymorphism, which means that at compiled time, it will be resolved as to what kind of operators are to be used or which functions have to be used. A virtual function is a runtime polymorphic concept, which means that only at the time of execution or at runtime, the compiler will be able to know 
the function body what kind of body the function is going to have and how it is going to be implemented so let me tell you about overloading overloading is a concept that occurs when same operator or function name is used with different signatures both operators and functions can be overloaded different definitions must be distinguished by their signatures otherwise the compiler will not be able to distinguish between the calls signature is the operator or function name and the ordered list of its argument types for example you have a function here with two parameters int and long there is another function called add with two parameters long and int if you notice both of them have different signatures because the ordering of the parameters is different here int comes first and then long comes and in this function the long comes first and then int comes so the signatures are different hence there will be no ambiguity with the compiler as to which one to call depending upon the parameters that are sent the functions are going to be called here we have another example the add with a constant base and add with a constant derived address they have different signatures although derived is a base most specific match is used to select which one to call so it becomes the compiler's responsibility to check the types and then make the decision which function to be called when an overloaded function is being programmed let us now look into operator overloading it is a type of polymorphism in which an operator is overloaded to give user defined meaning to it for example your plus operator can be overloaded to perform addition on various data types like integer string etc when it is going to be used with string we can program it such that it would perform concatenation of two strings operator overloading allows existing c++ operators to be redefined so that they would work on objects of user defined classes it improves the understandability of the code that we are doing and it also reduces the maintenance costs next let us look into function overloading here you see an example where we have the function called max you have three functions and all of them have the same name that is max but what you need to look here is that you have int a and int b as the two parameters that are going to be passed on to the first function double a and double b as the parameters that are going to be passed to the second function and a constant complex a and a constant complex b address that is going to be given to the third function so you see that all the functions are same they are polymorphic in nature but their signatures are different so when i am going to call this max function let us say i call with max 5 comma 10 so it knows that 5 and 10 being integers this function is to be called if i am going to call the max with a parameter say 5.7 and 2.32 it knows that it is going to be a double number and that's why it's going to be calling the second function if i call the max function with two complex numbers then this max function will be invoked and you would get the result So this is how polymorphism works with the help of function overloading. Another way to achieve polymorphism in C++ is with the help of virtual functions. Virtual functions are member functions that is declared within a base class and redefined by a derived class. To create a virtual function, you have to precede the function's declaration by the keyword virtual so it tells the compiler that it is a virtual function and its body will be redefined later this is the concept that is supporting polymorphism in c++ 
So whenever you have a piece of code which needs to be redefined at a later stage, you can use virtual functions and go ahead with your programming. And whenever you create the base class, you can go ahead and give body to that virtual function. Let me now go ahead and explain the concept of binding. Binding means association. Association of a function definition to a function call or association of a value to a variable. So whenever we are going to create a function or whenever we are going to create a variable, we are going to call uh, for its implementation and that is when binding comes into picture. Binding can be categorized as static binding or dynamic binding. So let us know what is static binding. A static binding is a phenomenon when it is already known during compilation which function will be invoked or what value is going to be allotted to a variable. In dynamic binding, the compiler will know only during the runtime which function will be invoked or what value to be allotted to a variable. So you can say that static binding is also known as the early binding because early we know what value is going to be associated with a variable. Whereas a dynamic binding will be a late binding where the binding will happen only at runtime and not at compile time. Let us look into an example where we would see the difference between static binding and dynamic binding. So here we are creating an integer variable called a in C++ and then we will be assigning values to it statically and dynamically. So what is the static implementation? In the code, if I write this statement int a is equal to 5 semicolon, it would mean that while compilation, the compiler knows that you have a variable created called a and it is going to have a value 5. This is known as static binding. But what is a dynamic binding? Here, in the dynamic binding example, we have created a variable called a, but we have not given a kind of a value to this variable. What we have done is we have said that it will take the input from the console and that value will be stored in A. So when this is going to be executed, we are going to have a space for the A variable, but it will not have any value associated with it until and unless we run the code. So when we run the code, the user might go ahead and give a console input, let me say 10. And if I say 10 is going to be inputted from the console, it will be binded to A. So this is a dynamic binding which indicates that at runtime only, A gets its value from the console. So this is how static binding and dynamic binding are going to be different. Here you have another example where we are creating a static, static variable called A and assigning a value 20 to it and also printing it. So in this static binding, as we have seen earlier, what we are going to do is we are going to create the integer variable a and bind the value 20 to that particular variable. We are also required to print it with the cout statement. So this is how static binding will be implemented and it's going to be printed. When we want to create a dynamic variable a and print it, what we will be doing is we are going to create a variable called a and we'll take the console input from the user. And once the user is going to give the console input, it is going to be outputted using the C out statement. Now let us look into an example where we are creating an array statically and dynamically. In the static implementation, you see that an integer array of three elements is created and the elements 5, 7 and 8 are binded to it in this example. But suppose if we want to create a dynamic array, how should we do it? In a dynamic implementation, what we would be doing is we would create an array of three elements and we'll also use a loop variable i. Now for i which goes from 0 to 3, we are going to get the variable value from the console input. 
So basically what it creates is an array which is indexed from 0, 1 and 2 so that it can accommodate three elements and this is array A and once you go for execution the user is going to give in the values during the runtime. Only then A is going to get the values. Let us say user has inputted 5, 15 and 20 at runtime and these values get binded to the array A at runtime. So this is an example of how array values can be statically and dynamically inputted for a generating a series of values statically and dynamically. Similar is the concept when we are using a 2D array. Here we see a static implementation of a 2D array. The binding happens for an array with three rows and four columns and these values are going to be statically assigned to this 2D array. Suppose if we want to go ahead and implement a dynamic binding of array values. In such a case, what we will be doing is simply declare the array and use two loop variables i and j. And here we are using nested for loop structure. The for loop for i goes from 0 to 3 and the for loop for j goes from 0 to less than 4. And we are going to implement this C in uh, construct so that we can get the values from the input through the console. Now in this example, an array is going to be created which has three rows and four columns in each of the rows. And these values are going to be inputted from the console when the user is going to give the values at runtime. So this is how static implementation of a 2D array takes place. And this is how 2D array can be dynamically generated and values can be inputted using the console. So finally, let us have a comparison of static binding and dynamic binding. The event that occurs at compile time are called as static binding, whereas those that are at runtime are called as dynamic binding. All the information are needed to, know, to be known at compile time, whereas only at runtime it would be available in dynamic binding. It is more efficient as compared to dynamic binding, but dynamic binding is more flexible. The execution of static binding is fast, whereas the execution of dynamic binding is slow. Static binding is also known as early binding, whereas dynamic binding is known as late binding. Overloaded function calls and overloaded operators are examples of static binding, whereas virtual functions in C++ and overridden methods in Java support dynamic binding. So let me conclude all that we have learned in this lecture. In this lecture, we have learned about inheritance and its various types. We have learned how polymorphism is implemented in C++ and we have also seen static and dynamic binding. I hope you have understood these basic concepts of C++ programming. Thank you very much.